But we start tonight with tonight's lead. And President Obama throwing down the gauntlet in the fight for economic fairness. The Republicans who run the House of Representatives right now and want to take over the Senate, don't boo, vote, work. They, but, but they have said no to every proposal that we know could make a difference in the lives of hard-working Americans. They said no to proposals that would rebuild our infrastructure. They have said no to equal pay for equal work. In fact, they've denied that there's even a problem. I'm just saying. They said no to increasing the minimum wage. The minimum wage is a central front in this battle. 93% of Democrats support an increase. So do 69% of independents and 52% of Republican voters. And yet, Republicans in Congress refuse to act. They are operating on a theory that time and again has proven to be wrong. It's a theory that says you're on your own. It's a theory that says if we just reward folks at the very top, then everybody else is going to do just fine. It's a theory that discounts the possibility of common action in order to make sure that opportunity is real for every American and not just some. They have a different theory about how America moves forward. A different theory and a different agenda. An agenda of pushing scandals and politicizing tragedy. Today, Republicans announced seven members of their new Benghazi committee. Democrats are considering a boycott. Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi sent a letter to Speaker Boehner calling the new panel unacceptable and referring to the repeated abuses of other GOP committees. Can you imagine if they put this kind of effort into a jobs bill or extending unemployment benefits or fighting record inequality? Instead, it's phony scandals and fake outrage. Why? to get attention off their do-nothing record of obstruction. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Hank jo Johnson of Georgia and MSNBC's Crystal Ball. Thank you both for being here. Thanks Thank for you, having us, Reverend. Well, the rain is pouring down here, but it's not dampening our spirits. Congressman, let me start with you. Don't we need to drop this obsession with phony scandals on and, and focus on what really matters, like economic justice. Well, I tell you, the Republicans want us to uh, shift away from the uh, debate over the Affordable Care Act. And so now they have sequayed into uh, Benghazi and IRS and, you know, no telling what else is going to come up. And these are all subjects that we've dealt with before. Been investigated through the uh, roof and uh, haven't found a scandal about Benghazi. It's just the unfortunate death of four of America's diplomats, and Republicans now want to make it into a, um, a political spectacle. That's right. it, 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 it's really a disrespect to those that lives that we lost so horrifically and tragically. You know, Crystal, if you listen to the ugly attacks some of the Benghazi committee members have made on the president. I mean, listen to this. You can't do immigration when you have an administration that doesn't respect the rule of law. And you cannot trust this administration. They haven't enforced the law, and now we're supposed to work with them and actually all things. It just, it, it, there's no way you can make that work. We are seeking to finally stop uh, co constitutional overreaches by the executive branch. I wish President Obama and his administration um, had the self-restraint uh, to act within in their constitutional bounds. You know, Mr. President, you want to run roughshod over the Constitution? We have the power of the purse. We're not going to fund your pet projects. 
Now, they say these ugly things, Chris, but yet they say this is not political. They say these ugly things. They base them in nothing but their own fantasies. And they use this meme about him being lawless as an excuse to do nothing. I mean, this is their excuse not to act on immigration reform as well. And I think the American people can really see such a dichotomy between what Republicans want to focus on, these charades, these political show trials, the investigations over everything, time and time again, even after their questions have already been answered, rather than on the issues that people really care about and affect their lives every day. I mean, if you pass a minimum wage increase today, it would impact the lives of tens of millions of Americans. I mean, it would have a, a huge effect on our economy. It would be so important to people who are struggling to get by today. And Republicans don't want to talk about it. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to even put it on the table. So while Democrats are out there and while the president's out there fighting for people, looking at issues that are going to affect not just today but the future of America, Republicans are, are having show trials and trying to score political points. You know, Congressman, uh, this week Congressman Jay, Trey Gowdy, who chairs this Benghazi committee, he made a big show of claiming uh, that uh, he is against fundraising off of Benghazi. Watch this. I have never sought a single penny on the backs of four murdered Americans. Yeah. There are two still, and even in a culture of hyper-partisanship, certain right. things that ought to be above politics, like the murder of our four fellow Americans. Should be above politics. Never did fundraising. But last year, the Lancaster News in South Carolina reported that Congressman Gowdy attended a fundraiser and talked about Benghazi, quote, referring to the scandal surrounding the murders of four American citizens in the Benghazi. Gowdy said, quote, it is a scandal. That's what he was saying at a campaign fundraiser, Congressman Johnson. Well, I'm sure that the Republican Party and uh, my friend Mr. Gowdy will continue to um, raise money and stoke up public anger about uh, this false narrative that they are projecting on Benghazi. It just seems to be a, a scheme to help drive out those most extreme voters who want to hear about this and um, you know and collect money at the same time and then uh, get those voters out and try to win the Senate you know Crystal uh, the Republicans keep going on these scandals 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 yet the president is seen focused on the economy on the upcoming midterm elections listen to this and so the question is what are we going to do about it in this midterm the choices couldn't be clear. The choices could not be clear. As Democrats, I believe that we should be fighting for equal pay for equal work. They do not. That's a choice. As a Democrat, I believe that op opportunity for all means that if you work full time, you should not be in poverty. We should increase the minimum wage. It's the right thing to do. Is that what is going to be critical in these midterm elections, that Democrats should remain focused on these economic issues, Crystal? Absolutely. I mean, this is what people really care about. This is what they want to hear about in this election. And even in red states like Arkansas, like this state here in Georgia, where we are right now, you know, people are looking for a fair shot. They understand that the country has gone in the wrong direction with all the money going to the top and people, the working class, the middle class, not getting a fair shot to be able to provide for their family to make sure their kids can succeed going forward. Those are the issues that people really care about. So I have to think at the end of the day, that's going to be the message that wins because it's where people's heart are. Republicans try to, to try to play on fear, right? They try to play on anger and hate and fear, these ugly emotions. And that's what they're appealing to with Benghazi. That's what they were appealing to before with their health care attacks. Yet, Congressman, two Republicans this week came out again uh, talking about the minimum wage, speaking out against it when we need help with our those that are suffering economically including right here in georgia well i tell you reverend two-thirds of the minimum wage workers are female that's right and uh it's really a shame that these caregivers and caretakers who are taking care of their children and the elderly have to try to scoop by on 
seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. Wow. And string together maybe two or three part-time jobs if they can't find a full-time job, and just doing their best, but they work hard and they're still eligible for public assistance, and that's wrong. I'm glad to leave it there, Congressman Hank Johnson and Crystal Ball. Thank you both for your time tonight. Thanks for having us. Have a great weekend.